morning, everyone. This is Yafa. It's a little after seven here in New York City. And due to a popular request, I put together a video of how I make sourdough bread that you've been seeing um, in my feed. I got into it not so long ago, but I, um, I'm hooked. Growing up with, with like stomach aches, um, I realized that if I eliminate some gluten out of my diet, I feel a lot better. I do not have those issues with sourdough bread for whatever reason, even if there is gluten in sourdough. Because of the natural fermentation, not only is it easier to digest, it contains higher level of vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants than other breads. The research suggests it can also help to manage blood sugar levels, which is important when dealing with diabetes. There's tons of information online about this um, and also on the making of the bread. I've taken the best practices based on my experience and will sum it up for you. First thing, here are the basic essentials to get started easily. I'm sure you have a whole bunch of other stuff in your kitchen already that you could put to use. But these are the few little things that I have that made it a whole lot easier uh, and, and enjoyable. Number one, a cast iron Dutch oven with a lid. The thicker, the better, with a diameter of at least nine inches, which makes for about four and a half quart pot. You don't need an expensive one. Make sure it is safe for up to 500 degrees and more. Due to the high temperature in the oven, the beautiful white enameled coating inside of a Dutch oven will turn dark. So something to take into account. You'll need a large bowl where to make your bread, a scale to measure the ingredients, a proofing basket. I use an oval eight inch. It looks tiny, but when it rises, it turns into a good size loaf or a nine inch round one for larger loaves. A scoop, parchment paper, all purpose organic unbleached flour or organic bread flour. A quarter of the flour that you'll be adding is whole wheat flour, which makes the bread darker. You need sea salt with no iodine. Loving hands. And of course, a sourdough starter, which you can either make yourself out of water and flour, it takes a good couple of weeks, or just purchase it on Amazon and then keep feeding this starter with more flour and water and it will never run out because the yeast will keep regenerating. The sourdough Prepping takes a couple of days, so if you'd like to have fresh bread, say Monday morning, you will start on a Saturday night. I will be narrating a recipe for a small size loaf that will feed about two people. It requires 350 grams of flour. Try that first before you make larger loaves, just so you could um, get a feel for it. For other proportions, I'm inserting a chart here. Take a snapshot of it and let's get started. So the first step, all you would have to do on a Saturday night or evening is take a container, glass container, a jar, add 10 grams of starter, add 40 grams of room temperature filtered or room temperature boiled water, 40 grams of flour to it. So equal amount of flour and equal amount of water. Mix it, put a lid on it without tightening, without screwing it on, and leave it on your counter for the night. In the morning, when you wake up on a Sunday, you will see that the dough mixture in the container had doubled in size. Just so you know, this, will, this whole process will take about six hours. But for two to three hours, you have to be in the area so you could keep an eye out on it. Now it's Sunday morning. You have sourdough from the night before. We get started. So from step one, we move to step two. Put your bowl on a scale and add a starter, 90 grams or whatever is in that container from the night before. From here on out, for all the busy folks out here, you can add all the ingredients together at once rather than how I would be demonstrating it in this video. So all at once would be starter, water, flour, salt, and other additives you wanna put in. The bread doesn't come out that different. It's just a different process and every baker does it a little bit different. Add filtered or boiled water room temperature, mix it. Now add flour, 
350 grams of flour. Uh, if you want the bread to be a little darker, you're gonna add a quarter of the 350 would be whole wheat. So for a 350 gram recipe, 262 grams will be white flour and 88 grams will be whole wheat. It should take you about two to three minutes to mix it all together. Then let it rest covered for 20 to 30 minutes. That is mixing one. 20 to 30 minutes later, uncover it, add salt and rest of the water. So for this recipe, it'll be seven to eight grams of sea salt. I like a little, little saltier, so I do make it a little bit higher than what's on the recipe. And 20 grams of water. Now don't worry if you end up adding a little more water than what the recipe indicates. The salt absorbs the water and even if it gets too wet, it prevents it from being sticky. Stretch it, fold it until all the extra water is absorbed into the dough with all the salt. This whole process will take about 10 minutes. You cover it again and let it rest for another half hour. That is mixing two. A half hour later, you uncover it and you start taking it from the side and folding it in. You will notice that the texture is no longer as sticky, even more pleasurable to the touch. All you do here is stretch and fold. Cover it again for another half hour. That is mixing three. Half hour later, you can either just mix it or this is the time where you would be, you could add other things to it like flaxseed meal or almond flour or rosemary and lemon zest or a little of each. I do both flaxseed and rosemary lemon, um, which makes for a really savory, aromatic bread. You stretch and fold it until it's well mixed and together and evenly distributed into the dough. Let it rest for another 30 minutes. So that's mixing four. And then half an hour later, stretch and fold the final time. It needs to look like a bowl and with a smooth surface on the top. So keep doing, keep stretching and folding it until that happens. Then turn it over with the smooth surface on the top. Cover it for the remainder um, of these, this whole five hour process, okay? So after the final stretch and fold, cover it for two and a half to three hours. That was the final mixing five. Two and a half and three hours or three hours later, when you come back, the dough would have doubled in size. Use the scoop to gently take it out of the bowl. With the smooth top still on the top, so don't just flip it over. Take it out of the bowl very gently. Right now, this dough is full of bubbles. If you're making two loaves, which is for a lot of larger portions, this is where you'd split the dough in half. Now, with the help of the scoop, you build the pressure by turning this dough into a ball. You cover and let it rest for five to 10 minutes. So you're building the pressure and let it rest for five to 10 minutes. And now, five to 10 minutes later, we're going to shape the loaf, okay? I'm gonna shape the loaf. Before you do that, sprinkle your proofing basket with some flour to avoid sticking. I do rice flour, um, which burns less. Now, if you want to have some toppings on the top of your bread, like pumpkin seeds or sunflower seeds, you'd sprinkle that into the basket. Now that the basket is ready, you'll be doing the final shaping. Gently turn over the dough and stretch it on the sides a little bit so you can fold it, fold it in. You will then, with the help of the scoop, once you have folded it in, um, roll it from the other side into a tight burrito. Put it into a proofing basket with face down, pinch the tops, Okay, now it's in the basket. Cover the basket and let it sit on the counter for an hour. It will rise. You will pinch the ends again. Put it in a refrigerator for 10 to 25 hours. 
The next morning, you're gonna put your cast iron pot into the oven and preheat the oven to 500 degrees. So never throw in a cold cast iron pot into an already preheated oven. They need to warm up together because rapid extreme temperatures will damage it. So preheat your oven um, from half hour to a full hour with the pot already inside. One thing I want to say, make sure before you preheat the oven, the rack is on the lowest so there's enough room for the whole pot in there with a lid. The, the pot in there needs to be super hot. So now the best part, right before you're ready to put the bread in the oven, you open your fridge and there it is, your dough sitting in a proofing basket in its full glory. You take the basket out, flip it gently into the parchment paper. Then you take a sharp knife or razor to score the dough. And here's the key, don't hold the blade straight. It needs to be at a 45 degree angle when you cut it. Don't be afraid to go a little deeper than you think. Now, if you've put pumpkin seeds or any kinds of other seeds on top of the loaf, you need to wet them a little bit or get a spray bottle and moisten them this way. This prevents the seeds from burning since they'll be in there for a while. It prevents it from becoming bitter. And now take the pot out of the oven, remove the top, remove the lid and using the parchment paper, gently lower the dough into the pot. Be very careful, the pot is extremely hot. Cover immediately with a lid and put back in the oven for 20 minutes at the same temperature, 500 degrees. 20 minutes later, remove the lid, okay? And let it bake at 430 to 450 for another 30 minutes or until golden brown. After you take it out of the oven, remove it from the pot and place it on a cooling crepe for 20 minutes to cool off. Then you'll know what to do. You cut it up while it's, while it's still warm, put some butter on it, sprinkle some walnuts on it, the way my dad loves to do it. Put some honey on top or even better maple syrup and it's delicious. It's the best breakfast ever. So first time will be an adventure doing this. This experience will satisfy many of your different senses that uh, you eventually start craving it. I'm curious what your experience will be like. Message me for questions or emergencies and happy bread making.